Yes. Uh, the gate was uh, 4.28 million, the arena record. The attendance was 17,208. The fight of the night was Dober and Rydell, and uh, performance of the night was Moreno and Craig. They all won $50,000. And if you can believe this one, because I can't fucking believe it, Jamal Hill's arm was not broken. What? It was dislocated. They popped it back in and he has full range of motion and the guy's okay. That's nuts. That's crazy. Uh, are you gonna cut Terrence McKinney a check? Seven seconds in debut. That, I thought yeah, that yeah, yeah. Be... We will, yeah. Well, you know, when you go back there and you gotta look at this shit and pick, you know, um, we, we, you know, we, we, we picked Paul because, you know, Jamal's 8-0, you know, it's hard to pick. But yes, yes, we'll take care of that kid. Nice. I guess to start just with the Jamal Hill, Paul Craig thing, I'm not to set you up to bang on the commission or anything, but did that frustrate well, you a little bit? If that, you don't know a guy's arm is broken. Or not broken. You know, yeah. <laughs> it, look, bro, when an arm is flopping around like this and going both ways, you should probably stop the fight. Yeah. Can, you, can you file anything with the commission or say anything? No, I'm, you know, listen. Arizona has been very, very good to us. I don't want to shit on Arizona after they've been so good to us, but that's a rough one. Yeah, the, the guys. If you, I, I heard. Uh, he, he's I don't a, know he's a local true. ref. He, he does that a lot. He's a local ref. I heard this guy's a jujitsu black belt. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. sure is. Yeah. He's, he's he's a bad local ref. Like he's consistent. He's what? <laughs> he's bad. If you go to a local fight and he's <laughs> refing, you know something's going to happen. happen. Oh really? Oh, he he he's the Arizona Mazagati. One hundred percent. Okay. It makes sense then. <laughs> on to the on to the better things. Israel Adesanya, I mean, seemed like a, a return to vintage form. Looked fantastic. What did you think about his performance this evening? Who? Israel Adesanya. Yeah, yeah. No, Israel. Listen, uh, Vittori is a tank, man. This guy is so tough, durable. The amount of leg kicks he took tonight and never buckled, never limped, never. You know, uh, you, you know, he's, he's tough as nails and. He was in there with a, with a much better athlete tonight. And when you look at uh, Adesanya's game, think about Adesanya was a kickboxer. You look at his takedown defense now. When he's on the fence, when he's in the middle of the octagon, uh, when he gets taken down, how he's able to spring right back up. And it's almost like he gets better every time. Obviously, when you come in and you have the, the energy. And uh, now, most of you have been with me in Jacksonville, Houston, and Arizona. Right? Arizona wins. I mean, Arizona, the, the first two were nuts, but this was like next level. And people were just like begging for anything to happen just to go crazy. And, uh, you, you know, you want that in your main event, but it was a tough fight. Yeah. He called for Robert Whittaker. Robert Whittaker called for him. Clearly the fight to make right now. That's the other thing I love about Adesanya. Adesanya, before this fight happened, maybe it was two or three days ago, um, we, we got the word that I want to fight again in October. It's like as soon as, he, he hasn't even fought yet, you know, and this kid's already talking about his next fight. I love that. Um, Adesanya has become a, a very um, badass champion for, for us, you know. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out him and Whitaker ASAP. Do you have any idea if October's possible to fight down there? Or? I, don't, I don't know. I, I, we got a lot of... Probably, you're talking about New Zealand or Australia, I would highly doubt it. That's like asking if we can go to Canada in October. I mean, they're, they're pretty much in the same boat. Brandon Moreno, give your thoughts on, on his performance. Obviously, an impressive win for him tonight. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be brutally honest with you. So, going into this fight, I, uh, I, I didn't see how Moreno wins this fight. The Guerrero is a savage. And uh, I thought the, the, the first fight was going to be, uh, I mean, the second fight was going to be much different than the first, right? And I was right, but I was wrong. Uh, good for him. Incredible performance tonight. Um, he looked like, uh, you know, Figueredo looked like he couldn't get off. He looked like he, he was slow. He, I mean, Moreno made it look easy, man. Yeah. And uh, he's the first ever Mexican-born champion for the UFC. So good for him. Would you try to fight? I don't know the situation in Mexico. Could you try to go to Mexico anytime soon with him? Or, or I don't know. Sitting right here right now, I, I have no idea. And we'll see. Uh, we'll see how this stuff plays out the rest of the year. 
Nice last couple ones. Uh, Leon, obviously a great performance by him. Almost, almost stolen away from him by, by Nate in the very end there. But what did you think of, of Leon Edwards' performance? Yeah, I thought, you know, for, 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 first of all, you, you've been hearing me saying leading up to this fight, you know, Leon Edwards, the kid with the worst luck ever in, in, in UFC history, uh, goes in tonight in a five-round fight and uh, against a tough, durable Nate Diaz who's always dangerous. And tonight was a, was a great learning uh, experience for him. And, uh, you know, he looked incredible the entire fight, even when he got hurt. Kept his composure and, you know, I, I think it was a little bit of he got stung and he was tired. And you think about it, that kid hasn't fought in, what, a year and a half probably too. So, um, great performance. So is Leon Edwards or Colby Covington the number one contender right now? Colby. Colby's still number mm -hmm. one. Okay. Last thing for me, Damian Maya came into tonight and said, maybe it'd be his last fight. He'd see how it goes. He'd talk to you, maybe one more. Um, obviously, he's a legend, so I'm not trying to you know, shut the door on him. But after seeing tonight, do you think that was his last fight, or would yeah. you like to see one more? I do. I think that was his last fight. It was the last fight in his deal. He's 44 years old. Um, you know, the, he's been so good at getting in there, securing the takedown, getting on top of people and just strangling them or, you know, grabbing something and twisting it until you quit. And uh, he couldn't get it done tonight. And he's 44 years old. He's a great guy. He's had a great career. And yes, I would say that's probably it. Dana, do you think Israel's starting to reach like that Anderson level where he's making opponents freeze in there? It looks like you know, Paul Acosta, Vittori, they sort of, after a while, don't know what to do with him as he sort of starts to chop away at them. What, what, what's the question? Is, is Israel starting to become like Anderson, yeah. where his aura is almost psyching his opponents out when they yeah, get in there? We were talking tonight, his faint game is off the charts, and, you know, he looks better every time he fights. And then the thing that I'm, listen, this guy's a, been an outstanding kickboxer his whole life, but what I'm really impressed in is his wrestling, you know? You, 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 you got to imagine that Team Vittori worked a lot on getting him against the fence, taking him down, getting on top of him, roughing him up, and they literally couldn't do it tonight. So he got into a position where he couldn't take him down and he couldn't stand with him. Everywhere he went was a bad place for Vittori tonight. It's been said before that flyweights are sometimes harder to market, but do you think Moreno can be a star for you guys in Mexico? I think he is already. Yeah. You know, Winning the title tonight and being the first ever yeah, I, th I think that's it. I think we're on our way with that kid. Now, now he, he's he's in a place where he's got to win. He's you know this this kid starts rattling off uh, title defenses, and holy shit, yeah, I bet I bet we got a big one. Do you think anything Figueredo's performance tonight is in that weight cut continues to be harder for him? He weighed in with one minute left. Do you think that's an issue for him still? Has to be. Yeah. Has to be. Um, the guy the guy's an absolute savage, and he hasn't been in his last two fights. Right. Uh, Lauren Murphy, she won again tonight. Again, she came back here. Again, I don't want to take anything away from Moreno no, no, no. either. Moreno looked great. But is, uh, is Lauren Murphy next for Valentina? Is there a what? Lauren Murphy, is she next for a title shot? I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. What do you think you do with Nate now? Because while he lost every round until the final one, he still was able to nearly put a title contender away late on in the fight. Where do you think he stands in the division? Where do you see Nate? What's next for Nate? I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Is he just a guy you slot into fun fights at this point? He's, he's a fan favorite. People love him. Win, lose, or draw. And uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what's next. Is it a little bit unbelievable he can still take the punishment? Uh, yeah. I mean, the punishment he took. His leg was done in the first round. He went five rounds and took a lot more leg kicks. Bleeding out both sides of his head. One was squirting this way, one was squirting this way, and uh, he was still, you know, doing what the Diaz brothers do. He was working the whole fight to get into, uh, you know, um, his head and, and try to make him make a mistake, and then he eventually caught him in, in the fifth round. Um, you know, he's unbelievable. He's going to be asking us for a six-round fight next time. <laughs> they over here. Contender, do you put him with Jorge so we can find out who's the real three-piece of the soda to side? Put who with Jorge? Leon. Who? Leon? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's always a fight we can make. I mean, that fight's always going to be hanging out there. I, th I think Leon tonight, I mean, Leon's the number three-ranked guy in the world, so 
we'll, we'll see what's next for him. I'm not sure if it's Masvidal, but uh, you know, Colby Coven Covington is the next guy in line for the title. So we'll see what happens. I know Brandon has got the belt. Who would be next for him? You, you thought about that? It's way too early for that. Who'd be next for who? Brandon Moreno. Who would be his first title defense? Guys, you guys know I don't make fights tonight. <laughs> you know, I'm. I, I don't know. You talked about how itchy he's to get approved as a wrestler. There's a trip you out that he's kind of getting to talk, like, um, my guy on front said, basically making him like Anderson. It's kind of like John. He, he, he turned into a sparring session on, on a pay per view. Who, who, Adesanya? Yeah. Yeah. Adesanya looks unbelievable, man. He gets better every time he goes in there. Um, and, and he is definitely, without a doubt, the king of, the, of, of, of that division right now. And since I haven't talked to you in a couple of weeks, I gotta ask you. I ain't heard nobody ask you this week. Did you watch Floyd and them and all that craziness last week? Did I talk to Floyd? No, did you watch? Did you yeah. watch Floyd? Paul? No, no. I talked to Floyd, but I didn't watch Floyd. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about the million buys? Because because the yeah, Paul brother, the Paul brothers had your name in their mouth last week. I was not, down there in Miami. <laughs> they said that tell tell your man Dana that they don't do these type of numbers. I'm just I'm just a messenger. Don't Who said tell me. your man Dana this? Jake them after the fight. Jake. Yeah. Jake. The other brother? Yeah. He, he didn't do a million. <laughs> His brother did a million. Him and Floyd did a million. So, last time we had a press conference, I told you all the Triller stuff is a bunch of bullshit. I said nothing about They're lying. The numbers aren't. Da, da. Those guys really did that number. That's a real number. They did that. Um, Jake didn't do that. Uh, you know, Logan and, 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 and Floyd did. Um, yeah, and good, and good for them. That's a real number. They really did that, and good for them. And, 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 and keeping it with the Paul brothers, the, the, Jake's fighting Tyron, as you know, and Tyron's telling people this is his biggest payday ever. The best thing for him was getting cut by the UFC because he's about to make his biggest payday ever to fight a YouTuber. Or a, a, I've been hearing that bullshit forever. I, you know, I've been hearing that. It's, they're all full of shit. How much what's he making? <laughs> exactly. If that's that much money and he's so fucking proud of how much it is, how much is it? But they're all full of shit. But that's how you hype up a fight, too. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I keep not wanting to do this. And, and Tyron Woodley's 40 years old. Okay? He hasn't won a fight in three years. In something that he's actually supposed to be good at. And now he's going to go box. How do you sell that fight? Lots of other things other than the shit that should matter. I'm making millions of dollars, and this is the biggest payday ever, and Jake Paul will say mean things about me, and pay your fighters, and fucking, and you guys just fucking get right into it and love it. It's all bullshit. It's all a bunch of bullshit. And, and final question for me. Oh. That we, you said Lauren's not the number one contender, so who would be? Because Valentina's basically cleaned out the division, and, she, and she's one person she has not fought in the top five. Who? Lauren Murphy. Yeah. Well, you said she's not the, she wouldn't get the shot for Valentina. You said you had not decide that. Who else would Valentina fight? She's fought everybody yeah. else in the top no, five. probably. I just don't want to say yes tonight because, you know, Tuesday will be a matchmaking meeting, and we'll start looking at what's next for everybody. Dana. Uh, and you know Valentina. If Valentino will fight. Fucking tomorrow, if we called her tonight, she'd show up and fight. So I would imagine that would happen. I'm just Damn not right. committing to it. Yeah. What would you talk with Floyd about? Uh, about that fight. <clears throat> just, you know, the success of the fight. And, and I didn't get that number from Floyd. I got that number from real people. <coughs> it's real. They, re they really did it. You know me. I'll fucking tell you the truth. The fight before that didn't do jack shit. Well, I shouldn't say that. It did a good number for people that never really fought. You know what I mean? Um, but... Um, this this one did a real number. Was there any uh, p during the Nate Leon fight? Was there any uh, part of you that was afraid that they would stop the fight again for the cuts on Nate's forehead? Did did, did I think they were going to stop? Was the there fight? any part of you that thought they might have to stop nah. the fight? No. Uh, Francis uh, Ngannou and Nick Diaz were in the building for this. Were there any updates on their next fights? No. Okay. Thanks. What else? Yeah. Uh, Dana, um, with with the world opening back up, um, how important is it for you to have dependable stars like Izzy um, and uh, Marina that can like sell sell fights and uh, uh, be, be dependable? Yeah, with the world opening world opening up and people wanting to uh, go to live events, how important is it to have uh, marketable stars like uh, Israel and um, Marina to fight? Well, 
yeah, I mean, that's always important. E even if we're still in the bubble, it's important to have guys that are stars. Um, but as the, uh, you know, when you think about a week ago, which we, we haven't done in a while, but we could go, like, right to Mexico City with a fight. And, you know, it was just a lot more options when you have guys from these certain parts of the world that I think have that type of drawing power. Hey, Dana. Yep. Just want to get your thoughts on Movzar Evola, 15-0, and 5-0 and now in the UFC. He's quietly taking names. Where do you want to see him next? He's adamant on a top-10 opponent. Who did you say? Movzar. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Again, Tuesday, Schmo. We'll All take right. a look at that stuff on Tuesday. Francis Naganu recently told TMZ he still wants that John Jones fight. Is the door still open for us to see a John Jones fighting Francis Ngannou next, or are you adamant that Derek Lewis is next in line? Derek Lewis is getting that fight, yeah. It's Derek Lewis's fight. And then, uh, you know, John Jones, hopefully by then we'll be ready for the winner. Hey, Dana. Down to, your, down to your right over here, Dana. Uh, yep. To your right. To your right. This right. Yeah, hey. I gotcha. Uh, Brandon Moreno, were you, were you surprised about the reaction that Moreno got this week in, in Phoenix. I mean, he got a similar reaction to like an Adesanya or a Diaz, who are much bigger stars, you know, one would think, but he was extremely popular here in, in Phoenix. No, he's Mexican. We're deep in Arizona. Um, <laughs> doesn't surprise me at all. You want to know what surprises me? I'll tell you what surprises me. Any of you know anything about fighting over the last 20, 30 years? If it's very important what location you picked for your fight. The f uh, um, what's his name was here tonight, the legend. Michael huh? Carbohal. Michael Carbajal, thank you, sir. The fucking legend. So Michael Carbajal is a great example. If I had Michael Carbajal back in the day, I'd have to fight Michael Carbajal here in Las Vegas, maybe Atlantic City, I could get away with it too, right? That's it. Very few other places you could go fight and pull a big gate into. I came to Arizona with an African who grew up in New Zealand and an Italian. They were the main event. Okay? And and look at the we broke the we shattered the, the gate record here, right? So no, I'm not surprised at all that people here love Moreno. I'm actually surprised that they loved Adesanya and, and uh Vittori, to be honest with you. Do, do you think that Moreno could be a guy that could headline events on his own in certain cities in the United States? Not even just Mexico, but also some cities in the United States. Do I, do I think Moreno like could? Moreno could be a yeah, headline yeah, I just, in some cities. I was just saying, I could go to Mexico City. I'm saying in, in the United States even, like a Phoenix or a Southern Oh, California yeah, yeah. Or, you just yeah. got to, yeah, you pick the right markets. and yeah. Plus, I, I mean, you know how our fans are, man. After the two fights that this kid's just had and winning tonight, I had, I had an African who grew up in New Zealand tonight and an Italian. You know, I could probably do this kid in the middle of Idaho or <laughs> Iowa and, and uh, you know, people would want to see him fight again. It's just, it's not like that anymore. It's not the way that it was with our business like it is in boxing. And uh, about Mexico City, they're not, uh, not full capacity yet. It's still limited, uh, limited capacity for there. So you know what that means. I won't be there. Right. I'm going to wait. <laughs> Dana. Thanks, Dana. Yep, go ahead. You I'll get you next, sir. You mentioned the bubble, and then you also talked about how lit it was out there tonight. The energy was off the charts. You did the same in Houston and in Florida. You seem to be leading the way with UFC to open up the whole country. Do you think much about that, the impact you're having outside of your business that you're running here? Um, not, not really. Um, you know, through this whole thing, when it started uh, and when we started get, getting ready to, to, to go to full capacity places again, I'm just thinking about my own little world, man. The people that I have to take care of and, and what I need to do, not everybody else. That probably tells me the answer to the next question, too. But you've created an environment of free expression that isn't happening in other sports. People can say what they believe. we got everything you can imagine when we see these fights from people all over the world. You seem to be saving the First Amendment here in the United States. Huh. I mean, is it too much to say the UFC is leading the way on restoring the Constitution here in our own country? It's what I love about the sport, you know what I mean? This, this is the fight game, you know? We, we live in a world right now, everybody's, let, let me just put it this way, everybody's very sensitive these days about everything. Um, this is a sport where we say mean things to each other sometimes and then we go in and we, you know, 
we beat the shit out of each other to see who was going to win. So um, through, through all the craziness that's happened over the last year and a half and the last 20 years, my position has always been, you know, this is America. And we have people in, in, in this sport from all over the world. You can say and believe whatever you want. It's up to you. You know, we had uh, everything from Colby Covington, you know, coming in with Junior's book and, you know, doing all this stuff, to Woodley coming into the press conference and saying nothing but Black Lives Matter. These are all grown men that can make their own decisions and grown women that can make their own decisions, their own choices, whatever religion you are, whatever country you come from, whatever, you know, that's the way it's supposed to be, I believe. And that's the way it will be until the day I leave. Thanks. Tana, um, <clears throat> you said earlier this week that Nick Diaz is going to fight again this year. Um, and with Nate saying that he wants to turn back around and fight in a couple months, is it possible that we get a, a double Diaz card? Um, I, don't, I don't know. I, you know, I don't know what Nate wants to do after this. What, what did he say he wants to fight? Is that what you said? Yep. Um, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Anything is possible. <clears throat> um, and then with the five rounds with uh, Leon and Nate, is it, um, will we be seeing more of those if it's a really good fight in a co-main event and, and, and you want five rounds? Screw it. I guarantee you everybody in this room has watched a badass fight and said, God, I wish this was five rounds. There's been so many of these fights that I wish. We can't keep doing that. I mean, we just can't. Um, Do you cherry pick? Huh? Do you cherry pick the fight? That Not cherry pick. I mean, Diaz really wanted to do it. So we sat in that room that I talk about that will be in on Tuesday, and we decided that we would do it, you know? Um, I don't want to make a habit of it. Co-main, main main event, if it's, you know, the championship, and all main events are five five rounds. Um, but, yeah, we, we can make those decisions sometimes. I'm not saying we will, but we can. Thank you. Thank you. Dana, right here. Yep. Uh, you know, we're minutes away from uh, Ryzen's big Tokyo Dome show going down, and, you know, you met up with Saki Barra recently, and they featured, you know, your conversation a little bit in some preview packages, uh, and he's been consistently interested in, you know, coming to America again. Just curious if you would ever, like, help or work with them a little bit to make that happen? Is Saki Kabara you're talking yeah. about? Um, you know, I, I like Saki Kabara. I, I, I always did, even when we... Um, we were really hardcore competitors. He was a he was a he was a fun guy to compete with, and uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not saying that I would, but I'm not saying that I wouldn't either. Um, you know, at the time when we competed, when Pride and UFC were both first coming up, you know, it, it was just a, such a different time in the sport, and and um, I don't know. Fair enough. And I want to springboard off of something you said in a recent interview where you, know, you corrected us with uh, corrected the comment that you made about the healthcare stuff. And just curious if you have you entertained it at least anything like that? Would I entertain what? Fighter healthcare. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. What, what's the question? Would I consider it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, listen, we're working on on stuff like that all the time. We're, we're working on. Um, you know, the, the, this brain stuff. We've been spending millions and millions of dollars on brain studies for, for years, and now all the psychedelic stuff is happening. So we're trying to figure out, you know, a lot of guys are interested in that from what we think. We think a lot of guys are interested. So, you know, we're looking into that. We're, all, we're always looking into m making things better, safer, and, and, and whatever the, for the fighters. Um, I mean, I don't know about health care forever. I mean, does anybody have a job where they get health care forever when they leave? I mean, that's pretty fucking crazy, but let's all go work there. I don't think, it's, I don't think anybody does it. And uh, last thing for me, Dana, in regards to the welterweight title fight, you know, looking at that rematch with Colby and Kamaru, are you thinking maybe by the time to do that, it would be like UFC 266 maybe where Another, another three title fight card, essentially, just because of how things are lining up. Could we see another three title fight card this year? I don't know. Yeah, it's all going to – all this stuff depends on timing. Um, and we came out the gates quick. 
with full capacity in arenas and we just started booking these fights and um, I don't know. I, I mean, I can't even tell you what's going to happen in three or four months with other states and other arenas. And You know, are we going to be back at Fight Island in the apex when the cold weather comes? I, I don't know the answers to any of these questions, but I'm ready for it. I'm ready for all of it now. Thanks, Dana. Thanks. Hey, Dana. Hey. Former Mexican. What's that? Former Mexican. Former? Former Mexican. So Did you say former? Yeah, I just say that. How the hell does that work? American now. You used to be, but now you're not? He's an American. So, making the point now is, seems to me that you had the right mix for formers and newcomers and Mexicans along the way. There's another places like Chicago who would love to see UFC. And there's then my generation then my son, his generation, who follow UFC because daddy likes UFC. Yep. So maybe that's probably something that we would like to pursue. I'm not sure what your question was, but, but I agree with you 100%. You know, when, when, when I was a kid, all of my uncles were big boxing fans and used to watch the big fights at the house. And there was just this, this energy and a buzz in my house that, that wasn't there for anything else. Could be any other type of sport. And that's how I believe I fell in love with fighting. Um, and, and yes, I, I, I meet people all the time. Lorenzo and I used to talk about this all the time, about you know these generations that would grow up with their parents with it on TV and now with it on ESPN. And all, all the television deals that we have, this younger generation is being exposed to more UFC than ever before. And uh, I, I, I agree with you, and what I think you asked me was, you know, uh, I know you said something about Chicago. Yep. Coming to Chicago? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love coming to Chicago. As soon as Chicago opens up, is Chicago 100% yet? I don't know. Is it? In like 15 days. 15 days. 18 days? 15. One five. 15 days? Well, that, that seems to be the, uh, the story around the country, so... If these places really open up, some are saying they are, but they're not. You know, it's 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 not what I'm looking for exactly yet. Um, we will start going to all these cities, and and I love the city of Chicago, uh, and the food. So yes. Thank you. You got the uh, the question perfectly, and uh, congratulations on this event. We are Sonians. Love it. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Did you talk to Paulo Costa after his statement? How's your relationship I with him not. right now? Our relationship is fine. I mean, listen, he said some nutty shit, and I straightened it out. That's how I look at it. Do you have any idea what's next for him? Do I have any idea what? What's next for him? Sounds like nothing. Sounds like he's going to sit out and hang out for a while, and I don't know what, you know? He, he said, uh, you know, I want to be paid more because of what all these YouTube stars are making. Apparently, he didn't see his last fight. Thank you. I got one. I got, I got one over here. Hey Dana, um, when you strip away all the lights and the cameras and the promotional bullshit that everybody goes through and they see, is Adesanya one of the most complete mixed martial artists you've ever seen? What was the question? Yeah, no, he's unbelievable. And like I said, as of late in his last few fights, his, his wrestling defense, his you know, his takedown defense is. You know, his ability to get up from, from, from the bottom. Um, you know, tonight he was in that rear naked choke. That was damn close to, to going in. And he spins around and gets the top position and gets out of that. I mean, he looked as good as you could possibly look tonight without finishing. That's it. Thanks. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Dana, in Houston you said that fight night gates aren't even figured into this year's budget. But with Vegas opening up, and is there any chance that after UFC 264 you could bring fight nights to like a casino or some other venue uh, that would allow fan attendance? Uh, is there any chance that you could bring fight nights to a casino or some other venue in Vegas that would allow fan attendance after UFC 264? Oh, in Vegas? Yes. You know, I talked about this, you know, we, we, we went through this uh, at, at, at the office and it just makes more sense for us right now to, I'm going to ride the rest of the year out at the Apex for fight nights. 
Um, I mean, if everything opens, well, I don't know. The answer is yes. I'm looking at just doing the apex. If things go the other way much faster than it seems like they're gonna, maybe I would travel uh, some of the fight nights. But as of right now, I'm not planning on it. It's just it's much easier to stay home and and uh, and do what we're doing now. I'm not saying it's the right thing to do. I can, you know, I keep telling you guys. I look at the apex like these people who are still sitting home wearing like a nice shirt and no pants and doing Zoom calls all day. That's that's what the apex is like for us. Uh, we do need to get back out there and start going to, uh, to you know, to these to, to doing fight nights in different arenas. But I'm cool right now with doing them at the Apex for the rest of the year. There he is. There he is. He next. Let me get out of here and let him come in and have a great night. Thanks, everybody.